Okay, welcome back. This is episode three, Control Long Play, commented on Morocco PDX. You have uh, Tony Lee commenting with uh, my brother Daniel, who is behind the controls Hello. in control. And we have telekinesis, baby. I don't remember. There you go. That's good. Oh, yeah. By the way, you can pluck rockets out of the air. Just gotta. Oh, you got some. Yeah, it's also a great way of dealing with it. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, yeah, those rockets will bother you. We got we got them. Get the blue stuff. Get the blue stuff. Yeah. Oh, that was that was a body check. Yeah. That's a rocket. Okay. We'll so if you get the red thing, those will explode on the track. Good thing. Oh. Mm. That was a car Oh, did you kill him with the car? I didn't think it was dead. Alright, big yellow. Spotlight. Oh, fun. And Andy later. Holly Jack. The amount of uh, spot because the amount of uh, environmental image allowed in this is pretty spectacular. Like so I was a little surprised at like what spots. Red faction levels of environmental damage. Ah, Technically, as much as that, the deformation of red faction is uh, almost unparalleled. Yeah. Um, I mean, like you'd almost have to go to Minecraft to like really do that. I still don't have a level one. Okay. All right. The whole point of this area was getting uh, this. Yeah, I'm just collecting. I'm surprised it's still not in the uh, space. Like maybe what else we gotta do? Do something around. Oh, oh that was good. Hey. That was good. We'll do some fun stuff. I love the sort of. said that the hotline can be reached through the mail room. Oh, that's right. Excuse me. Um, I like the the sort of boiling liquidy stuff. Oh, like this. That effect. Yeah. The style. Not already spawned in the game. Um, there is a card in the next part. So, I know these levels. They might even be redundant to put it in. That's it. There it is. It's level one. This must open the door. Sorry, go. Oh, oh, sorry, buddy. It's so. Oh my goodness. So excited to see I you. have never seen how absolutely ghastly that is. He just looks like he's ready to eat a hoagie. Oh, he can't pick up the The, the, the signal of the Uh, yeah, Steven Tyler. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's got some Steven Tyler jobs. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Make some weird noise. I will, uh, clear this, uh, Point. This is like a bonfire, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is your, your bonfire. In a safe place where I talk to the maiden. Dark open. 
The director is a fart person. It's just dirty fart person. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't like to be in the dark. There's another level. Oh, look at that. It's a control. Oh, I had a question earlier about yeah. one of the nodes. How do you think they contain the items of, you know, they, they were talking about containing them. Oh. You'll see. Okay. Do they put it in a vat of the dip, you know, from Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Or the dip? <laughs> How they killed Looney Tunes? Like? Oh my god. Oh, if only. That'd be pretty sweet. If. Not a, not a lot of anything. For, for sure, every time you play with something, you're going to pop those things. Um. What's on? Oh, yeah. I couldn't even hear a song, it just sounded like noise. It's a long opening to a track that always like, flips out the algorithm. Oh, my bad. Just saying the algorithm probably flipped out the algorithm, so it's all good. Alright, this is a uh, radio broadcast. You're listening to America Overnight, mystifying the airwaves for more than 29 years. Thank you for staying up with us. Ghosts. We've had many callers over the years tell us of hauntings, voices, and other phantasmagorical phenomena. Today, friend of the show, Dr. Quincy Reagan, tells his story. Quincy. Thanks. Well, this is something I experienced recently while staying at the Chili Pines Motel in Macon for last year's Suspicious Con. I was in room 47. The night manager, an avid listener of the program, insisted I take this particular room. Now, the manager explained that years back, the body of a man was discovered under the bed, inside that wooden border that motel beds tend to have. And the body had been there a week, he said. Guests had stayed there, sleeping with the corpse a foot below him. They only found the body when housekeepers complained about the smell. Hauntings have been reported in room 47 ever since. I happily took the room. I fell asleep pretty quick, checking under the bed first, of course. No ghosts visited me, no chilly spots or flickering lights. But when I woke up, I found myself under the bed. It was dark and stiflingly hot. Luckily, I was able to push the mattress off and crawl out before I suffocated. The night manager was kind enough to find me another room. Oh, there you have it, listeners. What we call ghosts take many forms. Quincy was brave enough to tell his story, and I encourage you to keep calling and writing whenever you encounter something strange, something you can't explain. Maybe you're seeing colors that we have no name for. Maybe your toaster is possessed. Remember, dear listeners, when no one else believes you, we do. America Overnight, we'll be right back. So a couple things. Um, you're listening to America Overnight. Good use of uh, Phantasmagorical. The number 47 is a well trodden sci fi trope number. Uh, often referred to as Sector 47, but just 47 in general has come up in sci fi, especially Star Trek. was famous for using 47 quite frequently all over the place. Um, then a curiosity. America Overnight radio station reminds me a lot of the. Night Springs TV show, except that it's a little different. It's a radio program calling in on paranormal stuff. I think radio stuff's like showed up in a lot of Remedy things even before, so maybe that's more what it's leaning into. So maybe that's more what the reference is.
either. That's just continuously playing. I happily do. Yeah. No, I, I was trying to let you kind of. I don't know. That's only that's on the radio thing. I don't really know where else to go with it. Well, I had. I thought I had something initially, but I kind of lost it. Um, but it was pretty curious little. I, it's. I mean, it's just explaining the real world people's encountering of uh, what the, the bureau would call an OOP. Uh, uh, like oh, I did. Uh, 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 oh, it's just another thing. It's one. I already have one. Okay. I thought that was actually the case where it would have a clear form on either floor. Although it's interesting, it's, it's still highlighted, like it's easy to pick it up. Oh, we encountered some more entities, so. Bill Research on this entity, his corrupted demolition expert confidential. Summary, the Bureau only allows certain highly trained individuals to handle volatile materials and weaponry. Our demolition, by the way, fuck these guys. Our demolition experts are instructed to use, the use in the use of explosives in dimensions with distinct physical laws, making them important assets in engineering work as well as combat situations. Hits demolition experts are the only observed hits variation to build the specially built rocket propellant grenade that is designed to identify and track redacted entities when fired, making them a threat whose termination should be prioritized in combat scenarios. I find it remarkable that the hits restrict usage of the weapon to the Bureau personnel who train specifically for its use. What does this tell us about its behavior? Can it not pass along new information to corrupted entities still to many unknowns to further file redacted from full report? Interesting. Those implications are, are, are uh, a little neat, but I do want to say probably boil down to a little bit of meta explaining gaming mechanics uh, in the end, saying that basically you have an enemy type restricted to being an enemy type with some vagary explanations as to him or how it works. Um, neat, but I just don't think it's worth reading too much into it. Build research on his entity, his corrupted ranger confidential summary. The rangers are the Bureau's well trained of expeditionary forces, where his corrupted counterparts are equally formidable. Prior to corruption, rangers were trained to use a variety of weapons in order to face any threat found during AWE response or threshold exploration, including submachine guns, bolt rifles, and automatic shotguns. His rangers utilize these weapons as well as advanced tactics taught by the Bureau instructors. Some are additionally outfitted with Bureau-made body armor. His rangers have no observed paranatural use of abilities beyond some being protected by it. Shielding of against his residents capable of stopping bullets. Considering the advanced training of the his rangers are capable of applying their system to their situation, is it feasible to consider that the human mind still remains intact to some degree? Or is the his able to tap into this combat training and utilize it for their observation as required for to file redacted from full report? Again, just kind of interesting meta explanation to game enemy mechanics. I, I honestly don't think there's too much to read into it. However, this does remind me of something I've been thinking about that's been referenced by other people analyzing Remedy's game, especially Control. Remedy has been trying to create uh, a couple games, and uh, and even going back to, I would say, the security forces that were a part of Monarch, the corporation that appeared in um, their game, Quantum Break that had soldiers that are very reminiscent of the Spiritual Bureau's Rangers. They've been trying to make a game that feature these soldiers, essentially, I want to say. I would I'd be highly surprised if, if one of the games that have been attempted to come out, whether it's that online persistent game or some other version of it, wasn't going to be some sort of version of a, of a massive online multiplayer or some kind of multiplayer game of playing these agents uh, running around uh, in, in some sort of version of, of combat, like a, 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 either a hero shooter or one of these other kind of shooter types, uh, maybe, maybe a battle royale. Mm -hmm. I could see any number of these 
the game mechanic scenario is being adapted into a remedy style thing featuring what would be the most current version of it, the Federal Bureau Rangers, uh, their iteration of the Monarch Security Forces. Um, and it just, so far, it has appeared it's not materialized. So a uh, best case scenario is to see what it looks like in Control 2. So it's all my thoughts on that. My, I'm curious. So these were former mm -hmm. FBC employees that have been corrupted? Correct. These are elite soldiers. Um, so you've been seeing... They're now controlled by the HIST. They're not actually free-thinking, normal these, yes, these employees are employees of the FBC. They're corrupted. Precisely. Okay. And, and you've mostly encountered the literal security guards. Well, and this is why we've... Everybody we've been fighting has been corrupted by the HIST. Because all these people are people who have been attacked by the HIST before me. And they have... Whatever they're called, uh, the Hadron uh, here. So these people have been murdered by the his, by the his manifestation, uh, not just these other form of weird his manifestations that have affected these people, but not turned them into his entities, I guess. Um, so yeah, and the Rangers are just basically a higher level, you know, uh, mob to fight. Uh, whereas you've been fighting security guards, like the lowest in total. And you got shield units, and what you'll even encounter are named that are literally just buff versions of them. They're like names. Uh, you, you maybe possibly already encountered some of them. And, uh, yeah. Maybe you're missing an ability to help you in the current field. Oh, he's got a major first class. So you can see he's just a really kind of like buff regular. Oh. All right, you did it. Got a um uh, a lot a mod that will affect your launch power. So the energy launch cost is going to by nine percent versus what you currently have is a health boost of seventeen percent. So I don't know. It's up to you what you think is trying out for a more value. I would say that your health right now is uh, I only died once. Actually, I, died more than I don't even think I died at all, actually, when I think about it. Oh. Okay. I see. <laughs> System security evaluation confirmed data breach. Summary. Last month, our on-site server experienced an intrusion by unauthorized users. After a thorough investigation, it was confirmed to be confirmed that the users only accessed a video file, which contained portions of various Dr. Darling presentations. Investigators were able to track users through their IP addresses. The following are the confirmed identities of these users. Patrick Strugens, Rubens Noguera, no, 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 Arturo Kalamaki, I'm sorry, butchering, butchering these names, Christopher Mills Bowling, Yako, Sutteran, Cernan, Mm. Those are challenging. These individuals are in breach of Bureau Code 91 and have been placed under surveillance by the external investigation team. Further action is pending. I'm just going to assume these are employee names from Remedy. Move on. Patrick Stu, Jan, Ruben, Strupens, Arto, Bolomaki, Christopher Mills, Bowling, and Yako Sarnin Sara Sari Ne. I don't know. I'm that uh, yeah, I'm just wanting to try and say it. We're just gonna embarrass ourselves yeah. as much as we possibly can with the yeah, actual finished people. We are know. products of the American education system. Yeah. You're welcome. All right. 
So uh, when you get uh, levitation, there's probably not to worry about that. That's fine. Oh, oh. Well, there's a little bit you can go in, and the rest of them just trick to buy the mold. Don't need it. Yeah. All right. Federal Bureau of Control. Pay attention, Alberto. This is the last time I'm explaining this. A turtle lock can put any triggered event that locks one or all of the sectors by restricting the of the sector elevator, effectively locking staff to their sector until an emergency is over. They can only be lifted via the directorial override in maintenance once the director is satisfied that the situation is under control. External lockdowns are a bigger deal. Nothing in our control of the whole nothing in on us or out of the whole building. It's only triggered by a code. Red containment breach based on some complicated system that security and research can slap together. It can only be lifted once A, the threat has been neutralized, and B, a high clearance individual deals the system in all care. This process is not the same as the direct formal override to stop saying so in documentation. I know it's confusing as hell. I've told them a hundred times to change it, but they're adamant it stays the way it is. Honestly, I don't think they even know how to change it at this point. Let's just make sure our staff understand how this mess all works. Okay. Marshall. So, clearly, we're now alluding to, again, the internal drama of the high levels of the Federal Bureau. And it's interesting. The miscommunication occurring. So you got your clearance one, because I think it's all you need to be able to get them to smell it. Stop his ability to throw something. Uh, but if you if you throw some stuff at us, it wears out his ability to and then you can cut him off straight up. my first death yeah <laughs> God. oh goodness <laughs> Dang old oh man. i couldn't imagine doing a deathless run in this oh my god impossible oh, it's not crazy. impossible as soon as i said that there's probably somebody out there with a deathless run yeah what a brutal i couldn't 
Yeah, some sick person. Okay. I was pretty close until this one. Indeed. 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 I also couldn't imagine like what a totally deserved like run would be like. crazy because the enemies are designed to try to flush you, which I never thought was like that smart, except like you really are hunkering down. It's kind of the only time you'd be so completely oh, that's Yeah. Oh, dude. I have a feeling he'll be back. Yeah. Let's stay focused. The hotline should be past the mailroom. Yeah. Well, there's a reading material. Tea time thing. I thought they were talking about like drinking tea. Mm, yeah, apparently golf references, which maybe is just a joke about like how to touch management. Um, not sure. That entire uh, document uh, actually is a curiosity. Not entirely sure if it's just a, a joke about or how to touch management or if it's just a random document. Or, or be more to something. I'm not, I'm not like that. So, I just have to wait a few. This is a door up there. I'm putting these eggs to the hot line chamber, which is awesome. One of those things. Oh, it does? Usually, that means we'll get a. Usually, that means we'll get a. Just to make that. We got both of them. Look, I got to. WE 17, then suddenly the state of disappearances was traced at a home in the city of B, where Bureau agents discovered a child located in Bridge Court. A vet Bureau agents arrived at the home in a local celebrity called of a local celebrity located in Redacted Redacted, which had been connected to a total of redacted disappearances in the area. They just found no one inside while searching a closet. <laughs> Agent pulled a light switch cord and disappeared from view. Another agent was selected to pull the cord. In order to replicate the event, he disappeared as well. Both agents were discovered, but the oldest out 
that few days later, found in the sealed room by the rangers in the Warren Indian area of the house. The white switch cord in Butte's home closet disappeared during this incident. None of this all revolves around this, the same town that the Alan Wake stuff takes it. Nope. So that kind of stuff will be way more obvious. Mostly for things to finish in. Alberto Tomasi. Yeah. Okay, you just spot. The head of comms. The hiss got him. All right, take this down. The situation in Cuba has been evaluated by the relevant authorities. The mysterious illness affecting the staff at the U.S. Embassy in Havana was caused by sonic weaponry in the hands of a foreign power. Numerous personnel have damage to the inner ear, but most are expected to make a full recovery. Of course, the event also damaged their cellular walls, but you can't blame that on some stupid noise guns. <laughs> Thank God no local doctors examined them first. Honestly, what are the odds at all that I didn't show up inside a U.S. Embassy? Talk about good luck, huh? <laughs> so much easier to... Man, are you still recording this? <laughs> okay. So this is the place that handles all the pneumatic tubes. Yes. The nerve center of the known pneumatic communication system. Uh, field research on his entity, his elevated agent, confidential summary, his elevated agent, his agent's display ability similar to tele telekinetic competencies observed in Bureau, Bureau Harry Utilitarian. Some prefer to charge their targets while others launch objects at them. Telekinetic attack have been effect ineffective against the his elevated due to their own talent in the area. They do not use any weaponry except for their own paranormal abilities. Some hits elevated have been seen levitating while stuck in chairs. This is likely the individuals being corrupted while undergoing cognitive recording in parapsychology. How are they able to use paranormal abilities? Is it possible that these individuals were bound to owe objects of power prior to corruption? It's also worth considering that the case residents can identify and accept latent paranormal abilities in individuals of trust. Refer to file redacted for full report. The hotline can't be far now. This OOP 5 KE, you run to the KE for it, must be contained in a cell with no other loose material. The object is an 8 inch disc containing Soviet air and nuclear launch codes. When found, the object allows fair utilitarian to dispel connected loose materials and throw a short disc to Darling's presentation. The object is currently bound to redacted for research stolen Soviet. This looks like identical. It's very curious. I don't notice anything different about this one versus the one we read before. Yeah, it has the same amount of redacted information. Maybe it's just uh, in case it missed the previous one. Yeah. I want to make sure that you see it, I guess. Field research on his entity, trust agent confidential. The his manifest in human host numerous ways, the most common way. And least intense form is seen in many corrupted agents floating around through the bureau. The his agents have maintained their human appearance, undergoing no obvious physical transformation. The most notable distinction from their unaffected human is the fact that they levitate. 
Mises have displayed no aggressive behavior. They only seem to be interested in vocalizing a strange invitation and in the matter. Perhaps these investors are only meant to propagate the hiss from the white scores or the red booster, or are they cocooned for preparing to enter their next stage of evolution? An attack this ancient spirit, perhaps it is a state of invisibility or undergoing a transformation into purely resident form. Research is ongoing. This has been finally adopted for full report. This is where I was supposed to open. According to the testimony, the agents have been transported from Pete Home to Roadside Motel, named the Ocean View Hotel and Casino. So this is a continuation of that previous report. And discovered a room key by performing a ritual scene file MOT01. The key opened the door marked in the inverted black pyramid, which they only learned after a lengthy period of trial and error. After pulling another motel cord found inside the room, they were transported to the oldest house. The disappearance of the home's owner and the other locals of the view have been attributed to the light switch cord. The Ocean View Motel is now known to have many doors and many pathways. Since the occurrence is identical, since the occurrence, identical light switch cords to the one found in the view home have begun appearing throughout the oldest house. At the time of this writing, redacted light cords have been found in the oldest house, located in redacted and redacted sectors. These all access the Ocean View Motel, though how exactly this link operates is redacted, but initial hypothesis centers on the Butte AWE as a redacted, redacted. See Dr. Darling's presentation 24.3 for more details. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to see you. Yep, bye. Okay. Um, there we go. The Ocean View Motel and Casino. Dream logic. The light switch cord. The door marked with the black pyramid. at once. <laughs> First death. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Hold it once. I said I do have to give it multiple tugs. Yeah. Did, three of one. That didn't really sink in. Here before? 
No. I've stayed at a lot of roadside motels across the country, on the road, on the run, under the radar. This feels like all of them, like something recognized from a dream. Good try. <laughs> I didn't know you actually could do that. I was really curious if it would just pass problem back. None of the doors. Okay. This one says I can, but yeah. So the documents that the the, the agents that came here through trial and error figured out how to get. I swear this was an open earlier. What? Key yeah. has a black pyramid on it. So what's interesting to me is that this first puzzle is literally just open the third door, which is fascinating to me. So I, I uh, sort of always gone in and tinkered with the other doors that would have opened with that puzzle. Apparently, none of it would have mattered. You know, literally, in this case, just need to get that third door open with the bell. Line up with that uh, picture. Yeah, I'll pass in the Indestructible enemy type.
That's why I, I don't even think you can like affect it in any way. It's just you need to avoid them. Yeah, my zero death places. It's an object of yep. power. It doesn't connect to any typical network. A direct line to the astral plane and the board. And my hypothesis is under the right conditions to other planes of existence as well. A director needs a team. My management team. These people know the secrets of the Bureau as well as I do. Some even better. Darling, Tomasi, Salvador, Marshall. Marshall especially, my head of operations. She sees right through me. She knows I don't like relying on people. The only person you should fail is yourself. But things change when you become director. reach trench well listen to him he feels more like an echo an echo with important info i need to get back to emily so i never noticed this before but part of that cutscene showed you actually uh, talking on the red phone in the director's office yeah i was gonna say it wasn't in this room right clearly like where she had the nosebleeds was in the director's office also interesting, it still has that one picture of Trent shaking the hands of that fucking total. I have no idea who that is. Interesting. OOP 3 UV. Object should be inaccessible for use except to the director. Object is a 1960s era red fake light. Telephone. The rotary dial has been replaced with a black knob of unknown purpose. The phone weighs redacted. The object allows the director to communicate with the redacted. Now this is a board, right? If used by anyone other than the director, the object will cause lethal redacted. See Dr. Garvin presentation 11.6 for more information. The object is currently bound to Director Trench. That's not updated re re um, recursively. Interesting. Background. The object spontaneously manifests in the director's office placed on the desk. Director North Moore has, uh, was the first known bureau agent to use it. This is, this is like the hotline room, but the director has the hotline in the director's office. A battery of tests will run on the object, including redacted and redacted, but its origin remains unknown. Is there a chance this is technically the office? Like, like the office? Well, maybe the office. Um, there might be another couple ways to look at the office, you know, like. Either that was a superficial office, this is the real one. Um, maybe this is like a special room for containment. And I don't know. I mean, I'm, my speculation is pretty wild because this is pretty early on in the game. So I'm kind of having a hard time finding context for the reason why there would be an office. There might be a superficial office for doing light duty stuff. Yeah. And then this is the supernatural office. We're doing supernatural stuff, I guess. Well, what I'm saying. It's, it's very bizarre to me. The, the phone is in this highly contained room. Yeah. And also well, simultaneously not it's in the director's office. Well, 
the director doing director stuff in his office isn't unnormal. It says it spontaneously manifested in the director's office. That's a good point. Wow. But maybe it's because it's connected to him. Sure, exactly. It's bound to Yes, him. absolutely. But weird. All right. Maybe. Yeah. I have questions on that one. Maybe That's it's almost a, a familiar, you know, because it's bound to him. It's, you know. it, it, it's, oh, the Darling Ring, ring. It's Dr. Darling calling. In 1978, a comms department intern heard the hotline ring and picked it up, going against every safety protocol in the manual. She never recovered, and the handful of witnesses required extensive memory repression therapy. It is a phone. It's an object of power. It doesn't connect to any typical network. A direct line to the astral plane and the board. And my hypothesis is under the right conditions to other planes of existence as well. Our very own Ouija board. Only the director can answer it safely, and what he hears is kept classified. Well, not necessarily, because... Up to that point, they'd all been men? Yeah. Well, there's a lot. Because these are all the actual... I can hear the hotline ringing in my dreams, constantly ringing, it's, it's, ringing so loud I can't it's hear the broken. voice I'm straining to understand. Why don't I pick up? It's a secure line of communication with the board. They would tell me what I need to know. Do I fear their answers? Would they have warned me of this threat? I didn't see it coming. A traitor in our midst. Conspiracy plotted right behind me. I can't trust anyone. I must assume all my intel has been manipulated. The hotline is the only channel I can trust. Bind it, control it. The rule and the ritual with objects of power. It can't be tampered with. A lifeline to the astral plane and the board. I must seek guidance. Soon. I'll rest first. I'm so tired. Always tired now. But I must reach the hotline. I think I'm under attack. An attack of dementia. Exhaustion. It's a brain cloud making me forget. The hotline. I'm hunger. I must reach the hotline. I think that these specifically are like The director needs a team, my management team. These people know the secrets of the Bureau as well as I do, some even better. They have proven themselves. Darling, Tomasi, Salvador, Marshall. Marshall especially, my head of operations. She sees right through me. She knows I don't like relying on people. The only person you should fail is yourself. So I followed my own orders. North Moore hated my guts for that. But things change when you become director. You suddenly see this dark void for the horror show it truly is. Filled with screaming fear we pretend to control. Sand leaks through my fingers. The roses I pruned in the garden back when I still had a family. All dead. Heat escapes my body. My thoughts are scattered. The universe keeps expanding. I can't keep up with it alone. When I forget that, things go wrong. And my team has to pick up the pieces. Damage control. To help me get out of my mess. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Should we keep blasting for him or should we come back to these later? The Ocean View Motel and Casino is a familiar friend to me. I stayed in countless motels like it while investigating AWEs across the country. 
back in my field agent days. Wait, wasn't this Those originally her motel perspective? All bleed together like a dream. Same and not the Oops. same. What happened when you walked Anywhere, up to the Nowhere. The ocean I thought she said something similar when we actually logic, got to the hotel. And the light switch cord leaks out to oh, be found in most so unexpected mm. places. And sometimes successfully encouraged to appear and act as a convenient lock to keep out those not trained in dreamscape navigation. Even Bureau veterans can only find one key in the motel. The key that opens the door marked with the inverted black pyramid. The rest, the many other doors, are still mysteries to us. We're all merely guests there. Even the board. Sometimes I need to visit, just to breathe easier for a while. It beats the numb, sterile apartment I spend my nights in, insulated from everything but myself. I guess that's where the whiskey comes in. Something's coming. The whispers growing louder. Worst winter storm in Bureau history. Retribution for my sins. Our sins. This threat could destroy the Bureau. Everything I've built. Destroy me. A web spun turning this place against me. I catch glimpses of it in the corner of my eye. It's just out of reach. Elusive. It's clever. A perverse game of hide-and-seek. Is this part of an attack? Obfuscating the facts. Dimming my eyes. It's hard to tell. I need answers. I haven't heard back from Darling. I fear for my friend, my closest ally. I think we made a terrible mistake all those years ago. That thing he studies is putting us all in danger. It's my duty as director to keep the Bureau safe. It'll be difficult. What's done can't be undone. There's no easy fix. Magical thinking is a requirement for survival. Pain and suffering are mandatory. To change things, you have to break yourself. I don't know if I have the strength. I'm old and weak. I'm afraid. I can see my hands trembling. I'm losing control. longer but the extra context was interesting yeah and not having it so broken up mm -hmm. yeah so, huh. people react strongly when i tell them about you is it too soon to tell emily she might be able to help okay I'm assuming, I'm she's, back to the... I'm assuming she's talking about her brother no emily emily is the Agent, you rescued from the shelter in the executive room. But she said people react strongly when I talk about you. And that means that she's talking about the entity that she's been speaking to in her head. Mm. You didn't see that effect. She's talking to that. Mm. So I don't know if she's said its name yet or, or what, but it's a it's a thing. So like when she's talking, what seems like us. She's actually talking to an entity in her head. Interesting. It's interesting. How does this seal? That's part of the containment. Ooh. We better sign off. Yeah. So this has been episode three of Control. Commenting has been uh, myself, Tony, and behind the controls is Daniel on channel Malraka PDX. We'll catch you again on episode four. Thank you for watching.